So, Travis Condor, class of 16 from University of Northern Iowa, political science major, he went on to go to law school at Drake, graduating here in 19. Uh, from there, he went to private practice, and now he works for the city's attorney's office. Travis will tell us about his journey here in the next few minutes. Uh, but first, I wanted to at least, since it's Halloween, and it's a Saturday after a certain hour. It's per, you know perfectly legitimate to have ourselves a toast. Travis yes. has his beer. Since Travis is a uh, lawyer, as our intro song says, you have to have a little bourbon with your lawyer friends. After all, Republicans get the blues <laughs> as well. Now, Travis, tell us. Um, First of all, for the audience, Travis and I have a couple things in common. We're both vets, uh, even though Travis is younger than me, uh, a couple of years. Uh, that gave us a unique, I think, perspective in our academic life. But I don't want to get it, put the horse before the cart. So, Travis, tell us sort of where where you came up from and how you got to you and I first. Well, that's a pretty long story. Um, I'm originally from, uh, did I lose you? Okay, I'm originally from Kentucky. And from there, after turning uh, 18, I dropped out of high school, joined the military, served for about five years, did two tours in Iraq, Iraq, and then went what, back up to Kentucky for a bit. I had a brother who did undergrad at UNI, and he still lives in the Cedar Falls area, and he kind of taught me into uh, Iowa and then I started look from there I started looking at schools to go to in Iowa and after determining like looking at I was already interested in going to law school at this time so I was looking at who had pre-law program had a pre-law program I knew Iowa did but I didn't really want to go to Iowa City go to a big classroom I'm more of a small class kind of guy I like to, like I guess I like to be able to know my professors and have a relationship and have them know me. Um, so I chose you and I. Yeah, so I, I think you're exactly on target there. You and I being not too big, not too small. Mm -hmm. Certainly, at least in the political science department, you're never going to have one of these giant classes. Um, yes. Nor are your classes ever going to be taught by a grad student type, whereas they always would be at Iowa, certainly for the big intro classes type deal. And yeah. you know, where that pays off is come time for letters of recommendation and stuff. You're not just a number, yeah. but a name and a face for the prof that you probably, you know, you, you actually get a chance to know. So yeah. that's what you can I could actually interject something really quick for law school for me. Yeah. That was kind of a big deal because I, I had a number of professors write letters of recommendation for me. And they were able to do that because they knew me. They felt comfortable doing that. And right. I had a number of like sitting judges be able to like write letters of recommendation for me one was a iowa court of appeals judge and that was pretty big yeah and then a number of my other professors were able to help me out as well how, how so that's coming out of law school that's going into law school that's just at you and i how did you get the uh, court of appeals guy uh he teaches a class there i don't know if he still does but it's judge oh, oh, yeah yeah here yeah yeah, absolutely. yeah okay that's amazing i actually didn't know that i think i i think i wrote for you I didn't, did. know, I, I didn't know about the other. So, um, but tell us then, that's how you got to you and I. Tell us how you fell into the Department of Political Science and ended up majoring in that. Well, I really like politics as a big, like, it's something that really interests me and like what shapes like people and their thoughts. And I think it goes hand in hand. I like economics as well. But I think politics plays a big part of economics. It goes like unseen or unheard. I studied some economics while I was at you and I as well, but I focused mainly on political science, obviously. And I just found it really interesting to learn like the thought process, learn how to think, help me write, which also is a big deal for going. If you're interested in going to law school, writing is a big deal. As a lawyer, I spend probably eighty percent of my day writing, and it helped me out with that a lot. And like I said, I was just able to get a lot of good experience before going into law school in the pre-law program as well. 
Yeah, that's great to hear because I think you're absolutely right about written and oral communication. Yes. We certainly try to, to train our students up in. And it doesn't matter, you know, of course it's helpful for law school. Of course it's helpful for graduate school, but it's also helpful for life in general, you know? Oh, yes, 100%. Uh, it doesn't really matter what career fields you go into. Those are important skills. So you have critical thinking, the ability mm-hmm. to orally communicate and communicate via writing clearly and concisely yeah. are things that, employers are always hungry for and it seems like writing is kind of a dying art right and but it should be right i mean it should not uh, you know you have to know how to convey concisely and cogently uh your ideas now yeah definitely like before i give an oral argument i give i submit a written argument to the court so if i can't convey my argument to the court through writing then there's no point in me like they're going to be the judge is just going to be confused about what i'm even doing there Exactly. And then uh, it's not ever a good idea to start out on the wrong foot with the judge. No. Uh, speaking of this, uh, were there any classes, in hindsight being 2020, mm-hmm. that you, you look back on and say these were particularly helpful, maybe even though I didn't realize it at the time? Uh, any, any particular courses stand out to you? Yeah. So I would say all the cl- like since I was like doing pre law there, there's a number of, as I mentioned, there's a number of judges. There was also a former, I believe, law students who became professors. And the way they teach their classes and test you are exactly how they test in law school yeah. and what they look for on their tests. And I didn't even know that going into law school. I wish I did. Right. Because knowing how to answer those tests is a big part of getting your grade. Um, but yeah, I found that to be extremely helpful when I finally realized that. Um, I also enjoyed like national security law because it's just being a vet is just something that's interesting to me. And law school actually offered a national security, or just say I should enjoy national security, the national security courses. Right. Um, but law school actually offered a national security law course. And because I took those courses at UNI, I was able to excel over my peers and be top of my class in it. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so, was that your specialty in law school, or was that just something that you were interested in? I mean, do you have a particular specialty? Yeah, like um, I studied mainly criminal stuff, and the national security fell in with that curriculum. Okay, and so after you graduated, I think you went to private practice first. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I practiced at a private firm that handled uh, a variety of different areas of law. They did everything but criminal and uh, family law. So I did contracts, personal injury, things of that nature. It's very interesting. I mean, Learning to research, like I did at UNI through like having to write all my papers for political science, um, was very helpful. It's very important to be able to do like learn to like find good resources to use in building an argument. Um, also, just reviewing documents is good. What else? Um, from there, I went on to be a county attorney, where I now prosecute domestic violence. And what, where are you at? Um, I'm in Marshall County. Okay. And uh, are you overworked and underpaid? Definitely. <laughs> the, the, the sad benefits part, are great, though. I mean, the sad part is the fact that you're overworked in that specific area. Um, mm-hmm. have, have you been there long enough to notice any difference between your caseload? prior to or after COVID shutdown times? I am not interested anecdotally in in wondering about domestic violence increases or static or decreases since all the. So I haven't been there long enough to really say that. I can tell you that my counterpart there that handles domestic violence as well has mentioned that it has gone up as, as a result of COVID, I think. Yeah. During the pandemic, they've seen increases, and the courts obviously backed up. Yeah, because they can't get to it. Right, and so you're cooped up. Everybody's mm-hmm. stressed out. Maybe you're out of work, financially suffering. I mean, all the ingredients are there for the powder keg. Oh yeah. Well, so at least business is good, even though that's a shame. Uh, it is a bit, yeah, it is. It's sad. A lot of those cases are very sad. Yeah. 
Um, are you are you planning on staying there, or what's your strategy? I really like it there, so I plan on staying there for now. Um, my strategy, I'll stay there for a few years. I mean, I believe public service is very important to be able to get back what you can to the community. Um, maybe someday I'd like to open my own practice at some point, though. But I don't know when. I mean, I just had a child, so it wouldn't be anytime soon. Well, congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, you you going to stay in for Halloween, I assume? Yes, yeah, we are. We are, too. But we're looking forward to raiding this candy. We're uh, we're letting um, uh, we're letting the kids dress up and they can they can trick or treat in the front door and the back door so they can run around that. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know you get the cute pictures of the costumes and they get to have yeah some candy. Uh, Travis, tell me, you know none of this is scripted. This is unedited stuff. What uh, yeah. anything else you can think of? Uh, words of wisdom. Were you? involved in any uh school activities or extracurricular type things that you would encourage prospective or even current students to engage in or to i suppose vice versa you would encourage them to stay away from yes i was in uh i was involved in model un right i i would definitely encourage that i mean i believe it's a free college credit for one yeah and you get paid or they pay for you to go stay in some wherever like whatever location they're having the conference that that year so that's nice and you get a chance to network with other people but you also get to stand up and argue in front of other people which is a good skill to have if you're looking to go to law school anyway right. or just in general i guess i'm sure there's a lot of other careers but for me that's what it was what was important to me um and that free college credit i mean that's always nice sure. and it's like an a so i definitely encourage taking that yeah you um, know, and i've said it once i'll say it again um our Model UN, uh, directed by Professor Worby, is one of the top ones in the nation. And you're crazy if you don't take advantage of that. I mean, first of yeah. all, it's interesting. Yes. Secondly, it's fun. Thirdly, you get to travel around, meet people, and all of this type of stuff. It's just a, it's a no-brainer in far, insofar as you know, um, taking advantage of that opportunity that we offer. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, do you feel that there's any specific room for improvement in the department insofar as preparing you for critical thinking, for good writing, for good overall communication in law school or the real world in general? Do you feel like um, we did a good job training you up on that? Or do you have specific points for improvement or anything? I have no specific points of improvement. I mean, I had a great experience. I had great help from my professors. Um, Scott Peters, he does the pre-law advising, and he did a lot to help me like prep for law school, send out my, um, you have to write a little letter of like about yourself, and he helped me prep that. Um, I credit myself getting into law school a lot to his assistant and assistance at handling all that. Um, no, I really, no, I think it was great. I have no, no critiques or anything. So uh, you always, you felt supported and um, yeah, there wasn't anything you wish could have been. Well, that's nice to hear. Um, yeah. I would remind the audience that this is strictly unscripted. Uh, and if you know Travis at all, he, he would uh, tell you. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would be, I'm honest. Like, um, I wouldn't take advice. Uh, there was something so, that I thought would change. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah, I would say it. Do you uh, do you have any final words of wisdom for prospective or even current students at UNI that are either thinking about majoring in poli sci or already are, but wonder where is leading? Yeah, so take it seriously. I wish that's my biggest regret is not taking it more seriously and doing all the reading because I didn't always do all my reading. I wish I'd done that. So I felt like I left a lot of knowledge on the table that I, I could have because I did that, because I was more focused on extracurriculars, I guess we'll call it. And I don't know, I do the model you in. I mean, they struggle to get people and it blows my mind because it is a good time. It is a free A and just going to boost your GPA and you're going to get so much out of it. 
Oh, that's yeah, that's all I really have. Outstanding. Well, uh, Travis, you've been very gracious with your time, and we appreciate it here at the Panther Political Science Podcast. Yeah. Uh, and we hope to engage with you soon and keep in touch. Definitely. All right. Thanks for having me. You bet. I'm going to hit the uh, pause button here. Mm-hmm.